With no monsters left on the field, I summon Dark Magician. Declare direct attack. Ah, you got me. Told you I was the master. GG. GG. Hi guys, this is Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. Definitely hit subscribe and make sure you hit the notification bell before you realise how bad this fucking content is. If this is not your first time on the channel, well, you may need to seek some professional help. In either case, thank you very much for coming along. I do really appreciate you being here for today's deck profile. On the topic of today's deck profile, we are taking a look at one of the classics, Dark Magician. This deck is still an absolute ton of fun to play. It's had a ton of support over the years, so what's not to like about that? It's certainly not the most competitive deck, probably rogue at best, but definitely a good lot of fun to play with. If you're watching this profile and you feel inspired to pick up the cards from it, you should definitely check out the channel sponsors, Jam Jam Cards UK. There's a link in the description, and you can get yourself a nice discount on all their singles on their eBay store. They don't just do Yu-Gi-Oh either, they do Pokemon if you're into that as well. But that's enough waffling on from me, let's get stuck into the deck profile. Let me first apologise in advance if there are any weird noises in the background. It is absolutely windy as fuck. It's been snowing on and off all day. So the horses next door are going absolutely apeshit. And as a result, you may hear some random neighing from the fields next door. Also, the fact that my laptop fan is going absolutely mental as well. So if you do hear the fan in the background, apologies. Hopefully we'll clear that up with the audio editing. But I digress. Let's get stuck into the deck profile. So it wouldn't be a Dark Magician deck without triple copies of Dark Magician. Pick your favourite artwork and apply them here. I just really like how clean this one looks. Largely a Relevant though. Again, being the ultimate wizard in terms of attack and defense, I think the three copies is absolutely mandatory. Here we have a ferocious dragon with a deadly attack, also known as Red Eyes Black Dragon. This is basically just an engine requirement because we're running Dragoon, and I think that you really do need to play that engine in this deck. Running a single copy of Magician of Dark Illusion, being able to special summon this and fuck your opponent up is really nice. Apprentice Illusion Magician gives you some advantage in the battle phase as well as being able to search. What's not to like about that? It's also a free body on board, so that's all the good stuff that we love. Triple copies of Magician's Rod, basically your go-to normal summon in this deck. I think it's pretty mandatory to play at this. We don't play Robe or any of those. We are playing Souls, however, which we'll get to in a moment. I think triple copies of Magician's Rod, though, pretty much mandatory in any modern build. The fact that it sets up all of your plays, it gets you spells and traps that you need in order to get everything going is an absolute must. We're running triple copies of Magician's Souls. One of the things with this deck is that it can definitely be a bit on the slow and bricky side. Magician Souls helps deal with a lot of those issues that we face in the deck. Unfortunately, it's still quite expensive at the moment, but I suspect it won't be long before we get a kind of reprint coming along. If you're playing online, though, of course, none of this is a real issue. We move on to our hand traps here. We've got triple copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. The best hand trap in pretty much every format. It hits almost every single deck in some capacity or another. And it absolutely cripples other rogue opposition. And as such, you absolutely need to play it at three. We're also running triple copies of Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion. Quite strong in this format at the moment. Of course, you can opt to play anything else if you don't have access to this or want to play something different. You could try to like to Skullmeister or DD Crow if you don't have access to this and want something that performs a similar function. Again, hand traps are always flexible, so if you're watching this in a new format or anything like that, you could probably take this deck and apply this again with just some alternative hand traps as options. Running triple copies of Dark Magical Circle, this helps you generate and gain cards into your hand, which is of course nice. The fact that you can also banish cards on your opponent's side of the field is absolutely awesome. I think it's a mandatory three of, in my opinion. Running triple copies of Part of Desires at the moment, I still think this is the best option out of all the pots that this deck has. It doesn't inhabit your plays in any kind of way, but it does allow you to draw two cards, which is absolutely beautiful. If you're one of those people that doesn't really understand why this card works, go and read up about it. There's an absolute ton of information out there about how it's correct to play this card at three if you're going to play it. And in decks like this, you really don't miss those cards that you banish. What you do, however, miss is when you don't get the cards that you need in your starting hand and you lose the fucking game on turn one. Part of Desires helps circumvent that. If you really don't want to run Desires, you could run copies of Allure of Darkness, although I think with a lower monster count, it's really not worth it in this particular build. 
Star Magic Expanded is quite a cool card, but really just one of. Uh, and there's a few other one ofs that we're playing in here as well. We're running a single copy of Illusion Magic, a single copy of Dark Magic Inheritance. We're running a single copy of Red Eyes Fusion, that's for our Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. I think it's absolutely mandatory to play in this build. One copy of Magical Eyes Fusion. You've got multiple targets in here that you can go for. Again, just a really strong card and something that you can send out of the deck with Predator Plant Vert Anaconda. Call by the Grave is incredibly strong, as always, against hand traps. It can also hit so many other decks as well. Just set up as a defensive or offensive card. Really, really good. And finally, a single copy of Monster Reborn. Sure to satiate the needs of those classic fans who love those classic cards. And of course, for the modern player, it is a good extender. Triple copies of Infinite Impermanence. This is really good going first or second. If you really don't have access to this, you could run the likes of Effect Veiler. Or if you have something like Forbidden Droplet, of course, you could run that instead. Uh, but Infinite Impermanence, it does a really good job either going first or second. And that's always a good balance to strike with cards. Two copies of Eternal Soul, just keep generating those cards. Unfortunately, if it gets popped, you can find yourself really cucked by the opponent. But I think two copies is absolutely fantastic. We're running two copies of Magician Navigation. You could up this to three if you really wanted to, but I think two is that sweet spot. I don't really don't think that you need more than this for the most part. And finally, we have a single copy of the brand new Destined Rivals cards that we saw out in the tins. I say it's brand new, that's how weird time is feeling at the moment. But be basically being a pseudo skill drain for your opponent's side of the field is something definitely not to sniff at. So it's worth noting before we move on that we're not running a side deck here. That is because it is largely dependent on how the formats change, how pro new product is released, and what you're playing against in any given tournament. As such, we don't include them here, but I'm sure you can find those out there, what good side deck cards are for the format. With that in mind, we move straight on to the extra deck. We start off with the obvious here, Red Eyes Dark Dragoon, absolutely broken, a really good card in this deck. I think it's fallen out of favour from a lot in the format, and as such, people aren't necessarily prepared to play against it. And with that in mind, you should definitely take advantage of that position. We're running a single copy of Dark Cavalry in here. You can't make it natively in the deck. However, one of my recommendations would be to side Super Poly and a package that goes with it. If you wanted to not do that, you would definitely cut this card out because you can't otherwise make it in the deck. But if you can make it, it's a really strong card, a really good option to have. And as such, I've kept it in there for that purpose. We're running a single copy of Quintet Magician. It really doesn't come up all that often, but when it does and if it resolves, you're pretty much guaranteed to win the duel there and then. We've got Dark Magician the Dragon Knight. This is a card that you will try to go into as much as possible. Uh, certainly where you can at least. It's a very, very strong card to get up onto the field. And with the right kinds of other protection, you can actually kind of soft lock your opponent out of being able to play effectively against you. We're running the two XC monsters here. Ebon High Magician and Ebon Illusion Magician. Both have their advantages in any given format. I'd recommend reading up on those and how they can benefit you in the game. I definitely do feel though that they're mandatory to play in this deck. We have a single copy of Red Eyes Flare. Uh, this can easily be made, of course, with Dark Magician and uh, Red Eyes that we've got in here. This can really punish your opponent, especially if they want to go off, setting this up turn one. It's also quite big as well, which is really nice to have. And also the fact that it can get Red Eyes back out onto the field, even if you end up using it as material. We then move on to the rest of our extra deck here. This is all of our link cards. We've got Selene running a Spellcaster deck. You absolutely need to play it. A single copy of Access Code Talker. If you really don't have this card available to you, use something like Boral Sword, which is far more budget friendly. But Access Code is absolutely fantastic. And we have a good variety of cards that we can use here for it. We have two of our utility cards here, Nightmare Unicorn, Nightmare Phoenix, for spinning cards or popping back row. And you can do that during your opponent's turn by virtue of IP Mascarena, which I think is mandatory to run in this deck as well. We have a single copy of Predator Plant Vert Anaconda. We are running fusions in here. We absolutely need to run this card. And then finally, we have a single copy of Link Spider and Link Rebo. This is for getting those level 1s or Dark Magicians and stuff off the field. If you wanted to, you could really cut the Link Spider there and go for something like Cross Sheep as well. That's a really good option to include in this extra deck as well. And that is all for today's deck profile. Thank you very much for making it this far. If you have, and if you've just skipped to the end, fuck you. In all seriousness, though, I do really appreciate you watching this video and watching the content that I make. If you did enjoy it, definitely make sure you've hit subscribe and the notification bell so you don't miss out in future. We don't just do deck profiles, although I am going through a bit of a slew of them at the moment. The content well is kind of dry at the moment with that weird thing that's going on in the world that I can't mention without getting demonetized. If there's something you would like to see on the channel that you haven't seen so far, definitely reach out and let me know. If you have any comments about the videos, I'll well, definitely leave those down in the comment section too. I take the time to read as many of them as I possibly can. All in all, though, thank you very much for coming along. I do really appreciate you being here, and I'll see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.